Well, hello, YouTube family. Welcome back to our channel. We are at the very beginning of our summer break. So excited about the easy mornings. Parker gets to sleep in a little bit. This morning, he's making his own breakfast. You guys know he loves him some scrambled egg sandwiches. So he recently learned how to make these on his own and it's been such a huge help. Today is just a regular day. We're just hanging out here in the apartment. It's super gloomy outside, as you could probably tell from the balcony garden uh, shots that I just took. It's been raining so much here in Virginia, but that is not abnormal for this time of year. Lots of storms, lots of tornadoes. So we're just hanging out inside. We're gonna wait for the rain to let up a little bit. We have some errands to run later on, but for now, I'm just gonna get my water ready for the day. You guys know I've been trying to get at least two uh, lemons the juice from two lemons in my water every day because lemon is so good for you. I like to add my sweet stevia drops and make kind of like a little lemonade and it's delicious. So we're at the end of May. We have just a couple days until our mountain trip in the Shenandoah Mountains. I'm super excited. And I decided to just call the school year. We had a few days left, but I thought, why? Why do this? Parker did amazing for fourth grade. So I'm letting him just hang out these last couple days of May, color, read, and just relax. All right, you guys. So I have something to share with you. Um, as you know from the title of this video, I said that I had a little bit of a surprise, just I guess an announcement that um, I wanted to share. Uh, as you guys know, Joe and I um, have two children. Lexi, our daughter, is 20 at the time of the recording this video, and our son Parker is nine. He's almost 10 years old this fall. So it's kind of funny because Back in the day, we thought we just wanted one child. When Lexi was around like nine or 10 years old, we started thinking that we wanted another baby and specifically a boy. And for me personally, I really wanted to experience having one of each, a girl and a boy. So there came Parker. And um, Parker was probably about maybe five or six years old when we decided that we didn't want any more children. So we had the two kiddos and at that time in our life, we thought that we had made up our mind and we were both active duty in the military. I was hard charger for um, advancement and I thought I was going to retire with the military and just climbing that ladder. And that was a huge focus for me. But as most of you know, if you've been on my channel for a while or even listen to my podcast, I, towards those later years before I decided to get out of the military, started questioning what my purpose was, where did God want me, um, what did he want for my life, and that was something that I really hadn't taken into consideration up until that point. I never consulted the Lord with any of my decisions. I just decided I wanted to do something, and I did it, um, and as I'm getting older, and I'm in my word, and I'm growing a stronger relationship with God, uh, I realized the importance of consulting him in the decisions that we make in our life, and uh, we've actually had some difficult situations that we've run into for not consulting him and just kind of doing what we wanted to do. In 2015 or 16, we decided to make the decision not to have any more children permanent. 
and Joe went and got a vasectomy. So it's been, what, about five or six years now since he had the vasectomy procedure, which was completely successful. So we decided to get the vasectomy so that it gave us peace of mind of no accidents or surprises, which was totally fine until probably about two years ago. Um, I started having second thoughts about whether the Lord would want us to have any more children or not. And the thing is, you guys, we kind of made that decision for uh, the Lord. We, we didn't consult him with that decision. And we kind of made that permanent without even asking God, like, what was his plans for us? And especially as I um, got into homeschooling Parker and seeing the fruits of that labor and that love and that time that goes into homeschooling Parker, seeing the, the little human that he is turning into, the love that he has for the Lord. Um, over the past couple of years, I have really shifted my whole mindset on mothering and what I feel like my purpose is here in this life. And you know, back in the day when I was working full time and doing the daycare thing and out the door with the diaper bag and the kid on my hip at 5.30 in the morning, five days a week, like that was normal for me back then. And raising children while I loved it was a burden. It, it, it was, it, it got in the way of like me chasing the career and doing the things that I was trying to do in a sense. I still loved my children. So like, don't misunderstand me, but now that I have removed myself from that kind of um, pursuit for a career and I've come home to my kids and uh, especially with homeschooling Parker, my whole thought process on mothering is different. I look at it more like a blessing now. I find my joy in, in my children. And of course, Lexi's grown up now and she's moved out of the house. And I look back and of course, these are things that go through my mind, but I um, wish I, I would have done some things differently with Lexi. I wish I could go back and do things differently with Lexi, but the reality is I can't. I was 19 when I had her. I was a child. Joe was a child. We were trying to raise this baby, um, and we did the best we could. And all in all, I still think we were amazing parents um, compared to what I had growing up. So. She had two parents that loved her more than anything in the entire world. We worked hard. We were always there for her. Um, you know, life may not have been perfect. Our marriage may not have looked perfect, but we're still here. We're going on 23 years married, and that's got to stand for something, right? <laughs> Please tell me that that stands for something because y'all know if you've been married any length of time, it's hard. Um, there's days where you're in love and then days that you're just like, I'm just committed today. Um, but the important thing is that you stay. And especially in today's culture, that's not something that we see a lot of. You guys know I just had my 40th birthday last week. So I'm 40. Joe is 42. And we have been talking for about a year and a half or so before we sold the homestead property and moved about maybe wanting to try for one more child. And it's kind of funny because we've got a 10 year age gap between Lexi and Parker. And if, if we had another child, there would be about the same age gap between Parker and this new baby. So it's funny because I joke and I think maybe the Lord knew what he was doing. Maybe he knew if he gave me like three little kids all at one time that I might end up in jail. I don't know. <laughs> maybe he knew like Tina can't handle all that. We got to space them out. But I started talking to Joe and of course this was my idea. This was brought up by me. Um, you know, Joe didn't come to me one day and go, you know, I think I want another baby and uh, I want to go get a vasectomy reversal and try to have another baby. No, that didn't happen, nor would it have happened just because of the fact that it would require a surgical procedure. Um, but it's something that Joe and I talked really seriously about and I just explained to him, like, I realize the sacrifice that he would be making if this was something that he wanted to do with me, because it's not like we can just go, oh yeah, let's try to have another baby and get at it. Like it actually would require him to go in and get a vasectomy reversal, which is a, an entire procedure. So, um, and then with the vasectomy, 
reversal, it's not 100% guaranteed. There is a percentage, a small percentage that it wouldn't even work properly. Like when they reconnect the tubes, there could be scar tissue. I mean, they, all the things, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, but um, most of the time they are very successful and we can start trying shortly after he recovers from that procedure within like two to three weeks of that procedure. So that's kind of the surprise that I wanted to share with you guys. Joe and I have talked long and hard about it. Um, we've talked with Parker about it and his thoughts and feelings as a family. I think we all need to kind of be in on this decision. We've decided that we would like to try to have one more baby. I don't, I don't feel done. Like it's so funny as you grow, you just look at things differently. And as a 40 year old woman, I know my body better today than I ever knew my body back in the day. You know what I'm saying? I know everything about my body, everything about my menstrual cycle, everything about my physical feelings, my emotional feelings. When I'm even coming on with a slight cold, I know it. Like I just know my body so well compared to when I had Lexi or even Parker. And I had Parker when I was 30 years old. I feel very capable, even at 40 years old, to have another baby. Women do it all the time successfully. The culture would have us believe that anything 35 and older, um, there's a lot of risks. You know, it's um, even impossible in some points to not even be able to get pregnant. And here's my thought process on that. I just feel that if it is in God's plan for our family, if it is in God's will for us to bring another baby into this world, into our family, then God's gonna let that happen. I'm not gonna let culture or some doctor determine what my body's capable of or what Joe's body's capable of. And uh, so I just fully lean on the Lord for that. As far as having another child and what goes into that, um, everything from the infant stage through the teenage years, all the things, that doesn't scare me. Um, in fact, I welcome the challenge. I think having little pitter-patter feet running down the hall is a blessing. And I, I just don't feel done yet. And I'm so grateful that Joe is on board. He's so supportive, you guys. Joe's really quiet. You know he's a quiet dude. He doesn't say much, but there's a lot going on up in his mind. And... He always tells me, and it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's joining the military. I talked him into joining the military straight out of high school. Whether it's having a baby, buying a house, he's always told me he's happy when I'm happy. And so that's what he told me with this. Of course, he's not excited about going under for the procedure and have the reversal for the vasectomy, but he's completely on board with it. And um, it just makes me feel so blessed that I have a husband that is so supportive and and would sacrifice himself to make me happy. I think that's amazing. For Christians, you'll know where I'm coming from. We have one purpose on this earth, one purpose. It's not to get the biggest house. It's not to have the nicest cars or make the most money. Our purpose on this earth is to be fruitful and multiply and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to as many people as we possibly can before the end of our days, right? Save as many souls as we can. That is our purpose. That is the great commission that God has lined out for us in his word. So to me, our world needs more Christian babies. Not saying like we send them out and put them in danger, right? But our world needs more Christian babies that are going to grow up to be Christian men and women to help change this culture and bring more souls to the Lord. And you guys know we've tried the adoption route um, that did not work out the way that we had hoped it would. I've got some videos on that. There's a playlist on my channel for our adoption journey. Um, that, that just didn't work out. And, you know, I don't know if that was the Lord saying, hey, this isn't the route I want you to go. Um, or if it was him saying that, I don't know. All I know is it didn't work out. And because we're moving from Virginia to Alaska in the next few months, my home study that we did and everything that we did, the inspection of the home, all the background checks, all the things to be able to adopt, 
we would have to redo all of that when we get to Alaska because it's a totally different state. So it's gonna take more time, it's gonna take more money. And I just, I don't know if I'm up for that. I don't know if I wanna go through all that again or do I just wanna bring another child into our family that is our own. We found a reputable doctor down in North Carolina and we actually already have Joe's surgery scheduled. So his surgery is scheduled in July. That was the soonest appointment we could get. So we have a few months to kind of prepare for that and mentally prepare for this decision that we've made. And it's a, it's a three day process. Basically we go in one day for his consultation. The next day is his procedure, which is anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours long. And then the next day is just the post-op checkup and everything to see how Joe's doing. And then two to three weeks after the procedure is when they say it's safe for us to start trying. And I don't know, you guys, God willing, uh, if, if, by the grace of God, we get pregnant the first time, then we would have another baby Watson by next summer, summer 2023. And I will be 41 by then. So I think it's exciting. I definitely don't feel like my body is not capable of this. Um, I am very healthy. I eat good. I work out. I also just got my blood work back that you guys know I got last week. I wanted to check all my micro macronutrient levels and everything just to see how I'm doing. And everything came back like golden. My doctor even wrote a note and he was like, good job. Keep up the good work. All my levels for my vitamins, minerals, like everything is spot on. And I feel good. I don't have any symptoms of early menopause or weird menstrual cycles that aren't making sense. I'm very regular. I know when I'm going to start. I know how many days. Um, I, I know when I'm ovulating. Like it's, I'm just very in tune with my body. So there's no signs that, that would even lead me to believe that there's any reason I'm not capable of carrying another child. I don't know. All I have to go off of is like my history, right? Like with both of my babies, I had extremely healthy pregnancies, natural deliveries, no issues, no craziness going on down there, no intervention. Like I have very healthy pregnancies other than severe morning sickness with Lexi for nine months. Um, very good deliveries. Uh, as soon as I had the babies, I dropped all my baby weight. Part of that was because I was in the military with both of them and I was right back into working out and everything when the doctor cleared me to, but my body just handled the pregnancies very well. So I, I, I think that I am still young enough and healthy enough that I can do this and women do it every day. And uh, I think this whole idea that once you hit this certain age, like, you know, you just shouldn't do it. Like, is there risks? Sure. There's risks with any pregnancy. There's risks with anything you do. So I'm not going to live my life in fear and hold myself back from something that, that I really want because I'm afraid of what everybody else is saying around me or what the internet says. I thought about, should I share this? It's still so like preliminary, right? It's still early, early on in the process. And I'm like, you know, once you put something out there, you can't really take it back. And I thought, no, one thing I love sharing with you guys is, is our journey. And that's everything, whether it's our homesteading journey, homeschooling, being a mom, being a wife, all the things. Maybe this journey that we're gonna go through can encourage you and you can watch Joe and I go through it. But I'm all for taking you guys on the journey. I don't wanna pop on a year from now and go, surprise, we had another baby. <laughs> I would rather take you guys with us on this journey because I think it's so exciting. And I am going to be tracking my body and my ovulation over the next three months before Joe and I can start trying to conceive just to narrow down that day because y'all our bodies are amazing we release one egg a month and that egg is viable for 12 to 24 hours so there's this little window once a month where you can actually get pregnant which is just mind-blowing to me there is a point for me where I am getting older. I don't have all these years left to do this. So if we're gonna do it, I wanna do it right. And with Joe's sacrifice and willingness to reverse the vasectomy, I don't want that to be in vain. So I'm gonna be closely monitoring my cycles, my ovulation, so that we can be as on purpose with this decision as possible with a lot of prayer, of course, knowing that 
it is in the Lord's will what is going to happen. Right. I had put on um, an outfit because we were supposed to be going to storage, but it's raining. It's pouring rain outside and it's like, I'm cold. You guys know I'm always cold. So <laughs> I put my hoodie and stuff back on um, until later on when we see if the Weather clears up because we're going to the mountains this weekend. You guys know we rented a cabin in the Shenandoah Mountains for Memorial Day weekend. And I've already started making my list of groceries and like supplies and things that we're gonna need while we're up there. So we're kind of getting that ready. I'm super excited just for a weekend of rest. I don't even think we get cell signal up there. So I am quite all right with that. So I think we're just gonna keep it simple at the cabin for meals. Um, we're gonna do cheeseburgers one night and then and I think we're also gonna do tacos. I was gonna do chili and cornbread, but we love tacos. So I think I'm just gonna do like some simple chicken tacos, bacon, eggs, and potatoes for breakfast. I'm gonna take some pancake stuff and then just simple stuff for lunches. I don't think we're gonna be doing any fishing up there. It's actually a cabin up in the mountains and it's got the jacuzzi. So it's just downtime. Like we're going to play games. We're going to go hiking, eat good food, sit in the jacuzzi. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Did you find them all? Yeah. Good Family job. was the last one. Yeah. I was having trouble with sand. Mm -hmm. yeah. We should print some stuff out like this for the road trip up to the mountains. Mm -hmm. You want to do that? Yeah. Are you excited about the cabin? Yep. It's going to be a lot of fun, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, so the rain finally let up. We are gonna run to storage here in a little bit. We have to get our big ice chest out for the weekend trip. Uh, but I have to run over to UPS first and pick up my Nampa's power of attorney document. You guys know my Nampa's moving back to California in like a week. Oh my gosh. Yeah, a week. As soon as we get back from the mountains, Joe is driving him across country and he's moving back to California. So I have been in the process of ensuring that his power of attorney document is on file for all of his companies because I pay all his bills for him. I handle all that stuff. So it's been a lot of stuff, you guys. Like dealing with Joe's appeal for the religious exemption, all the stuff that we're dealing with with the military, our upcoming move to Alaska, and then this huge change with my grandpa going back to California. Like logistically, it's just been a lot to manage. All right, I've got his power of attorney document. Do you guys know how unbelievably hard it is to advocate for an elderly person? Like his insurance company, his bank. I mean, you guys wouldn't believe the amount of time I've spent on the phone dealing with these companies. We actually went and physically sat down with Wells Fargo, put the power of attorney on file, uh, got a confirmation letter from them that we were good to go just for me to call to double check knowing that he's moving now that we're good and they were like we don't have a power of attorney on file what are you talking about like three days of phone calls with Wells Fargo and me just kind of losing my you know what on them because I'm like if my grandpa gets to California and I am not physically with him and you guys try to pull this crap like all hell's gonna break loose because I done faxed this power of attorney, I mailed it, I physically sat down and handed it to you. Like, what more do you guys need? And then you have people like the Social Security Administration told me that they don't recognize a power of attorney. And I'm like, what? Like, that is a binding legal document. I have general power of attorney for my grandpa. Like, I am him. I can do anything on his behalf that he could do for himself. And the Social Security Administration is telling me that I cannot be put on record for him as power of attorney. So I'm still trying to figure that piece out. Now Joe has to go while he's down there moving my grandpa. Once he gets there, Joe has to take him to the DMV, help him get his driver's license switched over, registration. And now because of this, Joe has to go to the Social Security Administration to help him get his address changed and everything because they won't let me do anything for him. It is just ridiculous. And they make everything so hard. And I definitely have have a little anxiety about it with him being so far away. Um, but we're, we're doing our homework. We're doing all the running around now, trying to make sure that everybody has what they're supposed to have so that I can advocate from him no matter where I'm at in the country. Oh, 
So Joe, how you doing? You wanna know what today's video was about? What? Us. <laughs> Trying to have another baby. <laughs> what do you think about that? Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Can you share your thoughts? I don't have any thoughts. You don't have any thoughts, but that's a total contradiction because I just got done telling all of our friends that even though you're quiet, there's a lot going on in your head. Babe. <laughs> so do you want to share any of that? No. No? Just going to keep <laughs> it locked up in there? Yeah. So can you at least tell us? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know you're a good dad, right? Hmm? I don't know. You... Never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are a good dad. You've always been a good dad. And we just get better and better, Joe, you know? You know what I'm saying? Third one's a charm, babe. I don't know, I don't know what happened to this guy. Hello. But third one's a charm. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Just kidding, Pete. You're my little baby, aren't ya? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens, huh, babe? Mm-hmm. We'll just roll with it. And if it's what God wants, then we'll just roll with it. And if not, then we'll roll with that too. Right? Either way, you're stuck with me for the rest of your life. So we came a couple days ago and rearranged the storage unit because my grandpa has all of his tools and stuff in there and we had to bring all of his stuff to the front of the unit. So when Joe goes to load up his trailer, we don't have to dig through the storage unit to find all of his stuff. Because originally we had packed it all in there without thinking about it because he was supposed to be coming to Alaska with us. So there's the ice chest way up there. As always, friends, thanks for joining us for another video. Take care and stay blessed, and we will see you very soon on the next video, which is going to be taking you guys along with us to the little cabin up in the Shenandoah Mountains. I can't wait to share this trip with you guys.